welcome to today's video where we're going to be looking at the harmony. So when we're looking at the harmony, what we're actually looking at is the chords. And that is the posh word really, or the musical word for chords, which is harmony. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at the type of chords Bach is using. Now you may start noticing these strange symbols. By the end of today's video, we will understand what these symbols are telling us. We'll hopefully be able to look for patterns and we're hopefully going to be able to look at what Bach is doing with these chords. So let's begin. As I said, harmony just literally means chords in this basic sense. So we're going to understand how to read the chords or how to read the harmony of Badineri. So you might have noticed that we're using these strange symbols and these symbols are called Roman numerals. So let's think what these Roman numerals mean. Let's look. Here is a translated version. When we see I, it literally means one. I, I is two. I, I, I is three. I, V is four. V is five. And V, I is six. Now what we do is we assign chords to these Roman numerals and it all depends on the tonality. Now in the last video we worked out there are different tonalities, there are different keys um, that Bach modulates to throughout the piece but the very start of section A he's in B minor. So let's just take B minor for an ex as an example. So we're in B minor and what we do is in the, in the key of B minor, we have chords. So B minor, we're in the key of B minor. Chord one will be the key of B. And as we know, in the basic sense, a chord is three notes. And if we follow the rule, play note, miss note, play note, miss note, play note, we can then form the chord, which is here, B, D and F sharp. So that would be chord one. Or chord I. Our next chord, or chord two, or chord I I, all that we do is we just go up a step. So from B, the next note above B is C sharp in this case. And again we to create the chord, we just follow the rule play note, miss note, play note, miss note, play note. And as you can see it just goes up in steps. So after C comes D. After D comes E, so E would be chord four. After E, F sharp, which is chord five, and after F sharp is G, chord six. Now, as I said, Bach does modulate through the piece of music, so he doesn't stay in B minor all the time. So these chords will not always necessarily be assigned to these Roman numerals, because it does depend on key signature. For today we're not really going to be looking at the notes in particular, we're just going to be looking at the Roman numerals and we're going to be looking at patterns that Bach is following. So let's look at section A and here are the chords and as we can see they're in, we've got our Roman numerals so we can see I, we can see I again and I, I etc. Now if we were to use our Roman numerals and we're looking for patterns, which is what we do as analysts, we're looking for patterns. Now, if we were to look in section A at the type of chords, which chords is Bach using frequently, we will notice that he's actually using chord one, chord two, and chord five. And what I've done is I've highlighted sort of all those chords that he's used in section A. A good 90% of them chords are either chord 1, chord 2 or chord 5. So already we're starting to note patterns in Bach's writing. That he's using chord 1, chord 2 or chord 5 quite frequently. Let's look at section B. So again, all the chords are there. I've analysed using the Roman numerals. And now 
having a look, I've highlighted in yellow all the chord ones, twos, and fives. Again, a good 90% of section B, he is using chord one, two, and five. So already this is really exciting. You know, we're starting to notice patterns that the majority of these chords are chords one, two, and five. Let's go in a bit more detail. So we have our Roman numerals and we now know that there's a lot of chord ones, twos, and fives being used in this piece of music. However, you may have noticed, you may have noticed that there were also letters being used, such as B's and C's. And you might be thinking, what is that? Well, this in terms of the harmony analysis is telling us whether a chord is inverted or inversions. And an inversion literally means you're changing the order of a chord. So let me show you. We're going to just take, for an example, we're just going to take B minor and I'm going to use chord one or chord I. So that's our chord, B minor chord, B, D and F sharp. Quite often when you play a, a chord like this, a B minor chord, quite often the bass would play the B and the D and the F sharp would be played by other instruments, possibly higher in pitch. So this is chord one. We would class this as chord one. The bass is playing the B, and the D and the F sharp are being played by other instruments. This would be called a root position chord. Imagine the roots going into the ground. However, as we know, Bach uses inversions, or we notice that there are inversions being used in this piece. So let's say, for instance, we play the B minor chord again, but this time the D, the note D is being played in the bass. So it's still a B minor chord, we've still got our B, we've still got our D and F sharp. It's just now he's changed the order. He's changed the order of the chord. So now the D is in the bass. This is still chord one, but because he's inverted it, and this would be classed as first inversion, we put a B at the side of it. In other words, I want you to imagine that the B has gone back of the cue, meaning that the next note along, the next note in the chord, which is D, is now at the front of the cue and is now played in the bass. So every time you notice a little B on the right hand side of the Roman numeral, this should tell us that it's first inversion. It's first inversion, so the chord has changed. Now let's say, for instance, we play the B minor chord again, but this time the F sharp is in the bass. So now the D has gone back to the back of the cue, and now the F sharp is now at the front, and the bass is now playing the F sharp. This is still chord one, but now we would put a little C at the side of it. And this is now called second inversion. In other words, the B and the D have now gone to the back of the cue, meaning that the last letter in that chord, the F sharp, is now at the front of the cue. It's a second inversion. And for you to know whether it's a second inversion, it will have a little C at the side of it. So inversions play a very important part in this piece of music. Because remember, he uses chord one, two, and five quite a lot. They're frequent chords. But it can get very repetitive if he just kept them in root position. So what he's done is he's inverted them, and I've highlighted in section A all the times we actually see any chord that's inverted. So we can see we've got chord one, B, and chord one, C, so we have chord one in first inversion and chord one in second inversion. Again, I've highlighted all the other chords where we notice we have inversions. We do have chord four here, it's not frequently used a lot, but we have chord four in first inversion because we have the little B at the side of it. So again, these are really interesting chords to note. Looking at section B, again, I've highlighted 
all the times we see chords being used in inversions. So we have chord one in first inversion, chord two, chord one in second inversion. And much later, we can see other chords. So for instance, we have chord five in second inversion. So, so quite often, these chords being used in the different inversions. So when we have a B at the side of it, first inversion. When we have a C at the side of it, second inversion. Now let's look at another important chord, which is called the dominant seventh chord. Now, as we know, just keep going back and recapping, we have our Roman numerals. And we now know that Bach uses chord one, two, and five quite frequently. He also inverts these chords. Um, so we have first inversion, we have a B at the side of it, and we have second inversion, or we have a C at the side of it. But now the next thing that we need to look at is a dominant seventh. Now, as well as this being called chord one, we also give it another name. So chord one is often called a tonic chord. And chord five is called the dominant. So if we were to look at dominant seventh chord, dominance telling us it's got something to do with chord five. So let's work it out. For the time being, we're going to take chord five as being an F sharp chord, F sharp A and C sharp. So this is chord five, or the dominant chord. But we might be saying, what is V7? What is a dominant seventh chord, or five, chord five, seven? So what we do is we have chord five. Remember, F sharp, A, C sharp. And what we do is we plus the seventh note higher. So the seventh note above an F sharp is added to the chord. So what we do is we need to work out what that seventh note is. So if an F sharp is one, we count up. So go F, G, A, B, C, D, and E. So now what we do is a dominant seventh is our F sharp chord, F sharp, A, C sharp, with the added E. And this is called a dominant seventh. So when we see V7, this is telling us it's chord five with a seventh added on. But most importantly, it's a dominant seventh chord. And as I said, we don't really need to know at the moment what notes go into this. We just need to pick out how frequently Bach is using the dominant seventh chord or the V7. And these are really important chords and we're going to find out how important they are in later videos. So what I've done at the moment is I've picked out all the dominant sevenths in section A. So we have a dominant seventh here in bar three. Dominant seventh here, we can also see we actually have a dominant seventh in first inversion. So again, that's an interesting chord. And of course, dominant sevenths following. If we look at section B, again, I've picked out all the dominant sevenths. We start to see more inversions this time. So we have to see here, we actually have a five seven B. So again, a dominant seventh in first inversion. Over here we have five seven D. So again, a dominant seventh, this time in third inversion. So the seventh note is in the bass. So we're having a lot more inversions throughout in our dominant sevenths. So again, another key chord for us to note. The final chord I want to make you aware of is 2, 7, B, or chord two, with an added seventh in first inversion. So let's say, for instance, chord two at the moment is a C sharp chord. C sharp, E and G. That's chord two. It's not always going to be those notes, 
remember because it does change key but just for the time being we're going to use this as an example to understand chord two we're going to say it's c sharp e and g now we need to think now what two seven b is now you may have actually worked it out based on the other slides and earlier in the video so it might be worth pausing to write down what you think 27b might look like using this example so pause the video welcome back so let's see if we think of chord 2b let's take the 7 away for the time being if we have chord 2b this is telling us it's chord 2 in first inversion so we have e is in the bass Remember the C goes to the back. This is the first time it's been changed. But now we need to think, what does the seven mean? Well, what we do is we add the seventh note higher above the C sharp. So in this case, we have C is one. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B. B is the seventh note above the C. So let's just say, for instance, we had chord two, seven. This is telling us that it's a C sharp chord, C sharp, E and G, with an added B. However, this is two, seven, B. So the chord is in first inversion. So I'm going to take this chord and put the C sharp in the back so that E is in the bass. So when we see chord 27B, this is a really important chord. And again, just like the dominant seventh, we're going to find out why and how important it is in later videos. But when we see 27B, this is telling us it's chord two with an added seventh. So we've added the seventh and we've actually put it in first inversion. In this case, the E is in the bass. As I've said, this is an example. Chord 2, 7B will not always be a C sharp chord. It will be other chords. But what I've done is just help you out. I've picked out all the chord 2, 7Bs. And again, you'll start noticing he's using them quite a lot. Chord 2, first inversion with an added 7. And if we look at section B, not as frequent as section A. However, in later videos, we're going to find out why this chord is so important. So, before we end, I just want to give you some top tips. Remember, we have come across a pattern. We've noted that Bark is using chord one, two, and five quite frequently. So my top tip would be to try and remember the bar numbers of these key chords. So when you're revising your score, look for it. And remember the bars were, he's using these chords. And familiarize yourself when you're looking at the music so you're aware of where it like falls. Try to remember the bars where he uses the chords which are inverted, for example, chord 1B, or chord 1C, or chord 4B, for instance. That's quite an interesting chord because it only happens once. And of course, try to remember those key chords, the dominant seventh chords, even their inversions, and chord 27B. Again, these are two important chords to note because these are really important as we're going to find out in later videos thank you so much for listening to the video as we started to pick out those key cards in our harmony analysis i will see you in the next video and we're going to look at even more important and interesting cards i will see you soon bye <laughs>